Good morning. Happy Easter. Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew the Apostle on this glorious Easter day. Welcome to all who are present in the sanctuary and all those who are joining us virtually. The service continues with the opening acclamation, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-given Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning is a reading from Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God appointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witness to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. 
All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy and yours for Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I have proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which you are all being saved. If you, her if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I hand it on to you as of first importance what I what I, in turn, had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom still live, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one ultimately born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I was persecuted, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, but was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen, uh, linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in, in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The shroud of death no longer controls. The future is open. The love thought to have been destroyed is afoot again. We are free to live boldly, lovingly. Amen. Easter is the moment when the beginning meets the end. Neither the gospel nor the creeds end with Jesus crucified and buried. For Christians, the resurrection is what the fuss is all about, as they say. Women talked, couples argued, and the followers of Christ did not know how to respond to the publicity. Rumors of the resurrection captivated the imaginations of everyone around Jerusalem that first century weekend. And 
2,000 years later, this narrative of events ties together the entire testimony that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. It is said that the account of the resurrection in the Gospel of John, what we just heard, is one of the most beautifully told stories in all of Scripture. That the record of the one who is first to the tomb is a woman gives us a powerful reminder that we Christians confirm the testimony started by a woman. We have seen the Lord. This, of course, is not the first or only time that Jesus called women to public ministry and affirmed their place. In the Gospel of John, Jesus' first sign is performed in response to what we might call a social disruption noticed by his mother when the wine runs out at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. An entire community is introduced to the idea of Jesus as Messiah on the testimony of a woman of Samaria who meets him at a well. Now we are told that Mary Magdalene comes to the garden early on the first day while it is still dark. It calls our attention to the creation narrative of the chaos that existed on that first day, a chaos that we might identify in the circumstances of today as hopelessness, horror, and hurt. It was still dark. But why does she come? We wonder, is it sheer grief, a longing to be close to Jesus even in death? Or is she concerned that Jesus' body, already disgraced in mockery, torture, and crucifixion, will be degraded even further, even stolen? Or is she holding hope that what he said in his last public teaching, when I am lifted up from the earth, somehow means that death is not the story's final chapter? The gospel does not tell us why she comes to the tomb. It only tells us her response to finding the tomb empty. She runs to tell the others. They come, but are able to see no significance in this emptiness, and so they leave. Mary, on the other hand, returns, her longing brimming within her. Sometimes we hear passages from the Gospel of John that sound mystical, mysterious, sometimes even intellectual. What is interesting about this account of Mary Magdalene's encounter with the risen Jesus is that it is depicted in images that are decidedly not abstract. Quite to the contrary, the scene between the two of them is visceral, emotional, and deeply personal. It calls us to consider whether our faith in the risen Christ must be as real and physically grounded as that garden encounter was for Mary. As we heard, she looks the gardener in the eye, listens to him speak, and still does not recognize him. Then maybe when her back is turned, he says, Mary, and the sound of his voice saying her name helps her to see him. Mary, the word that applies to her and her alone, the word that captures the utter particularity of who she is. 
and she cry, cries out, not with tears this time, but with joy, Rabboni, teacher, their voices embracing in a tender greeting. Like Mary, we too long to be known by God, to be seen by God as the object of God's love and desire and care. And not in any general way, we want to be seen for who we are in the most intimate, far-reaching corners of our interior selves, our bodies, our histories, our dreams, and losses. When Jesus says, Mary, his words travel to these most interior places in herself, when he speaks to us through her, his grace travels into the most private places of our own lives. And there, John's Gospel tells us, Christ is made known. What does this reveal about the form of God's appearing in our lives? As he did with Mary, Jesus comes to us not as a general idea or as an imagined ghostly figure, but as a presence that touches our lives in ways we cannot see. They are felt, they're tasted, touched, smelled, heard, seen, and as such, often as unconscious as they are visceral. Christ is known in the memory of our bodies, in the turn of the lip, in a smile, in the voice of a friend in a garden while it is still dark. And we, like Mary, are transformed. It is no longer dark now. The rising sun dispels the shadows. It is Easter Sunday. And so to those who despair that our guilt is too great for God to forgive, fear not. For Easter means that God has cleared all accounts, liberating humanity from shame, reconciling us to God and each other as God's children. To those who despair that deadly powers have the upper hand, fear not. For God ultimately is and will be victorious of the, over the powers of death. Easter means that God has taken one of the worst things in the world, the Roman cross, and remade it into one of the best, the tree of life. Easter is not the end of Lent. It is the beginning of Christian life. The trumpets and the lilies signal the dawn of a new day. It is Easter Sunday, and so rejoice. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Will you please stand as you are able? Let us together affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God who raised Jesus from the dead. Loving God, we praise you for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Shed his glorious light on all Christian people that we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross, risen Lord. In your, in your glory, glory, hear us. us. We pray for those who at this season are receiving in baptism your son's new life by water and the Spirit. Dying with Christ, may they know the power of his resurrection, risen Lord. In your glory, hear us. We pray for our nation and for every nation, for peace throughout the world, and for a new spirit of respect and understanding among all peoples. Stir up in all your children the hope and yearning for a new future for all creation, risen Lord. In your glory, hear us. We pray for all whom we know and love, both near and far. May their eyes be open to see the glory of the risen Christ, risen Lord. In your glory, hear us. We pray for those who suffer pain and anguish and all who are in sick or in any need. Grant them the faith to reach out towards the healing wounds of Christ and be filled with his peace, risen Lord. In your glory, hear us. We pray for those who have died in the hope of the resurrection, for those whose faith is known to you alone, for those who died in war through natural disaster, and for all those in whose memory Easter flowers have been given. Unite us with them in your undying love, risen Lord. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, hear the prayers of your people and grant that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Will you please stand as you are able? Brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you.
let's see. Oh, yeah, it's, it's back on. Well, welcome again. Good to see you all here. Um, if this is the first time that you are here, please do sign the visitors uh, uh, list uh, by the entrance so that maybe we can get in touch in the future. Please join us after the service for an egg hunt in the garden and a reception in the parish hall. We have our services every Sunday at 10 o'clock and we would love to see you all here whenever you can, can come. We love to have you all. Um, okay, so now we have the flowering of the cross. So all the children and all of those who are young at heart, please come to put the flowers in the cross. Don't be shy. The adults can, can for the little uh, kids, the adults can help them out as well. Oops. <laughs> ah. There's a lot, a lot of flowers, so, you know. You did it. <laughs> Keep coming. There's a lot of flowers here. Come on, the young at heart. Yes. That's a little bit too big, I think. I feel like it's on the stage. Here. Yeah, that's right. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rosa. It's gonna grow. He can't put, he wants to put two more flowers in it. Mm -hmm. I'll put that flower. There's yeah, flowers okay. together. And you can put that there. Okay. There. 
Right. Okay. All right. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
of your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sanctified for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to the to life again he has won for us everlasting life therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, 
and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. All those who are baptized are welcome to and invited to come forward to receive communion. If you would not like to receive communion, but rather a blessing, just cross your arms upon your chest and you will receive a blessing.
Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Will you please stand for the final blessing? The Lord be with you. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love today and always. Amen. Go forth into the world in the name of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The